All right, today's the day, and you're probably thinking that this video is kind of early, being early in the week, but it actually it's very late, being a video from last week. Um, kind of a disaster week, a lot of different things um, interrupting us, and um, part shortages, meaning that went to do one project, missing parts, had to order those, try another project, missing something there as well. So kind of jumping around, and that and the uh, interruptions I had. But anyway, we're going to take a look at building the upper control arm for the front and a couple other odds and ends. So let's go see those things. And as I mentioned, some of those distractions are that a spring has sprung here in the Northwest and spending some of my mornings, at least a few hours every morning, getting the garden ready, up and going. Another of those big distractions is that I don't typically don't chase after shiny things, and uh, these certainly aren't shiny things, but came across the opportunity to buy two of these old saloon cars. Anyway, what do you think of the idea of after the Arate doing a resto mod on this car? You know what this car is? Go ahead and put a note in the comments. See if you know your old classic cars. Give me a year and make. Anyway, something to think about in future episodes of Builder Creator. Well, we got to put these cars aside for a while while we finish in the Arate. So, big into the Arate, back to those front control arms. Now, the ball joints on the last control arms were a little bit tight, and so I'm going to board those out slightly and make sure the components fit, those water jet components for the arm. And once they fit, time to take them to the welding table and start building this thing. Now, if you remember, the rear control arm was built out of a quarter inch steel plate because it's going to take quite a bit of loads back there with the shock mounted directly to it. Whereas these front control arms don't take nearly as much loads. So they're built out of a uh, 3 16 plate, of course, water jet cut parts. And in the case of this, around that ball joint, I needed to be a little bit thicker. So I just had a ring cut and get to build up the thickness around that for our ball jet ball joint should say and gonna you know, weld that to our main frame member there so tack welding these things all in place and then as i do the construction do the final welds feed that weld around now basically the construction of this thing is again kind of the i-beam theory the main frame of these is going to be 3 16 flat bar that goes around the outside and inside edges, creating the main strength of this, whereas that water jet cut part is basically just to form our shape. And these front control arms, just like the rear uppers, are using the same Fiero urethane bushings. So got those pieces of pipe that have been turned and bored out for those bushings. Going to connect those to that main base plate that creates our shape. And as we did the same method in that rear upper control arm, I had that solid metal bar going through those pieces of pipe so that the heat does not blister through because we need those to be smooth inside for that bushing. Get it set up, go ahead and weld those in place. Now there's just a little bit of clearance on those bushing tubes to allow for that flat bar to go right onto the edge. Now the first piece is not flat bar, but actually a water jet cut part because it has a little tab that sticks up, which is just gonna be a little tab for the future in case I just get to the point where I can add some little rheostat sensors for feedback. So like I said, that's a shape piece. Once it's tacked in place, now I'm gonna to go to the flat bar. Now leaving the flat bar a lot longer so that I can actually bend it around as I go. And so the process here is just to uh, tack weld it in place to where the first bend is going to be. And once that tack weld's done, you have the leverage of that long flat bar to be able to bend it around the thing. Doing the finishing weld here around the bushing socket. 
you know, bending the flat bar, and it does not seem to be moving too well. Actually, put a little bit of relief grind in it, bent it around. I'll just fill that with a weld. Makes a minor turn. You'll notice that there's a little bit of an angle or a bend in that base plate that makes our shape. These A-arms are mounted just slightly lower. And so to keep the ball joint straight in alignment with the hub, just put a little bend in the A-arm. So that flat bar had to be notched slightly, bent a little bit according to the shape of our base plate. Now I'm just tack welding our flat bar till we get to the next area where it's going to bend, just so that it won't lift off as it goes. Once it's tack welded on both sides, like I said, again, I have the leverage of the flat bar. Give it a bend around. A little elbow grease and a little hammering. Once you get it close, mark it off so that it's going to match up with another piece of flat bar that's already mounted on there. Cut it off. Always cut it slightly longer. We can grind it shorter. Cut it short. Tar that on. No, no strength in fill welds. And then go into a tried and true method to hold everything in place. The ultimate leverage of a screw or clamp. Now, the magic of you not waiting for me. Here it is done. All the flat bars also been welded to the inside angle and taken off powder coated. Here's those Fiero bushings again. Nice tight fit for those to slide into. Slide in the wrist pins. And then magically, you didn't get to see this time me struggling to get the ball joint in, but it is pressed in and there it is finished. Now you may have seen on that drum behind that part where some brackets, these are all the pickup points for the suspension. Water jet cut parts. They're water in the water jet cutting. I had drawn out in the CAD version a tiny little notch that shows you where to put the bend on these things. Here are all the pickup points ready to start getting welded to the subframe. Sand blasted some so they'll be ready to weld, but this is the location for that rear control arm where they're going to mount onto the subframe. Due to multiple reasons, we're having to relocate some things here, especially with these turbochargers. Now this mount that the turbocharger sat on before had lots of problems, which of course adds to the reason why we're relocating things. So this was the base part of the mount. And if you can look here, let's see if you can swing around here. This one bracket come down here could only have one bolt into it. There's a little ledge it sits on, but still just one bolt. Not very good for lateral support. Also, this bracket was also really close to this oil galley, which had a 90 degree banjo on it. I would have had to extend that out. Now I can go back to the original banjo that came on it. Also, this water outlet. I would have had to turn that hose really tight. I would have rubbed on there was going to be a problem. That is going to be resolved. This bracket over here had plenty of bolts in it. We will be going back to another bracket there that comes up and catches the new motor mount, new turbo mount, I should say. Also, you can't see now with the turbo's gone, but this here was also slightly interfered with the drain for the oil going back into the pan. So new turbo mount's going to resolve those problems. And turn our turbo slightly to an angle, move them out away from the engine. Now that I do have lots of room here. We're building this plate, not going to show you much of it in this video, but 
made up a template so that hold these turbos in place. Aluminum plate going to be sitting in about this position, holding the turbos parallel. Anyway, I take that template out and cut me an aluminum plate. Also another little bracket to hold one side of the aluminum plate up be mounted to the engine right there. We talked about that old one coming off. There's the new. Here's the turbos in their trial fit on an aluminum plate. Sitting in the new position. Not terribly drastic from the old, but it'll give me some clearance. Just what we needed. Well, like I said, short video doing that upper control arm for the front there. We will try again also to get that video out on Thursdays, trying to be consistent with that Thursday video. Let's see if we do it this week. Like I said, things got a little bit screwed up in our timing, but we will attempt our best. Anyway, hope you're all doing well and thanks for stopping by. Come back and see us again.